hoping that someone could see me this morning. It's urgent. Eleven o'clock? Yeah, that's great. OK, thanks. Bye. Who's that? The clinic. What clinic? Abortion. See if they can sort something out for me. Definitely made your mind up then. <sighs> yeah. I mean, what choice have I got? I'm up to me neck, innit? What about the Farnums? Well, what about them? It's gonna be gutted. Well, they'll get over it. They'll just have to find someone else, won't they? As long as they never find out that I was pregnant. And what about the 15 grand they've given you? Well, I'll just have to pay it back, won't I? How? Well, I don't know. I'll pay them in instalments or something. Jackie, do you know what all this means? You're gonna lose the bar. You won't be able to pay Barry. Yeah, but if I made that place work, I can make somewhere else work. I'll... Well, I'll just have to start again. Jackie, you are gonna lose everything. Are you sure you're doing the right thing? What is this? Are you trying to talk me into keeping the baby? I just want to make sure you know what you're doing. I've got to do it, Casey. It's the only way out of this mess. I've made up my mind, and I'm not going to change it. Uh, thanks, love. See you tomorrow. Who was on the phone? <sighs> the doctors. They've got the results of my tests. Is everything all right? Well, I don't know. They won't tell me over the phone, will they? What? But I've got to go in and see the doctor at half past ten tomorrow morning, so there must be something wrong. No. Oh, come off it, Carmel. They're not going to ask me to go all the way down there just to tell me everything's fine, are they? I've got to go and see the doctor, so there must be something serious. A whole fortnight before Jackie's fertile again. Well, you won't make it go any quicker. No, pity. And there's one surefire way of making it go slow, and that's keep going on about it all the time. So why don't you just forget about it for just for a couple of weeks, then? I wish it was that easy. Well, at least try. Concentrate on some of the other things in your life. Oh, exciting things like folding sheets. Yeah, well, anything. As long as it keeps you occupied. I'll go. <sighs> Look who's here to see you. Hi, sis. Oh, what a wonderful surprise! Well, I was on my way to Preston for a course and I thought I'd drop in. Oh, it's lovely to see you. Give me two minutes to put all this away. Max, make Lisa a coffee. Yeah, of course. So, how is she? Well, she, you know, I'm down. Mainly down. Look, I hope you don't mind me phoning you asking you to come round. I, I didn't know who else to turn to. Have you got a minute? Don't tell me. If you need more time to pay. Yeah, just a few weeks. You know, give me a chance. <sighs> You're not gonna let me have the whole hire. I can't. It's business. We had the deal. Yeah, and the deal's a deal, eh? Another we'll try, I suppose. I'll be round to see you tomorrow. One day she's right as rain, and the next. I know it can't be easy for her. It can't be easy for either of you. Well, I've got the restaurant to worry about, keep my mind off things, but Susanna, I, I just wish she, she had something else in her life. She's totally obsessed with having this baby. She talks of nothing else. Oh, are you still here, Max? Oh, Susanna. <laughs> oh, Lisa's just been telling me about her course in Preston. Oh, <laughs> European land subsidy. <laughs> Fascinating, eh? <laughs> nice to see you, Lisa. Thanks for dropping by. See you soon. Oh, Lisa, I've got so much to tell you. Take the book in your right hand and read from the card. I swear by Almighty God that the evidence I shall give shall be the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Is your full name Michael Anthony Johnson? Yes, it is. I've logged all Jackie's fertile days, when a period starts, when it finishes. I try to make a note of everything. In fact, I see her most days, you know, just to check up on how she's keeping. And that must get on her nerves. No, not at all. In fact, Jackie and I have become quite good friends. 
Yeah, but be careful, hey? I mean, you don't want to drive her away, do you? Jackie's totally committed. I know we can count on her. Everything's going to be just fine. Oh, Lisa. I got very excited yesterday morning. I think Jackie did as well. I really thought she was going to be pregnant. I know I shouldn't get my hopes built up like that, but I just couldn't help it. I think we wait all month and then you get more and more excited as the day approaches and then... Oh, well, maybe next time. Maybe in time for Matthew and Emily's anniversary. But that's only six weeks away, for God's sake. Oh, yes. Well, Jackie would have to get pregnant next month. But what if she doesn't? Oh, I have to be positive. You have to be realistic. This time next month. Susanna, In time stop. for the anniversary. Susanna, for God's sake, please. You've talked about nothing else since I got here. It's, it's too much. You've talked about nothing else for months. Even Max says so. Max? Yes. That's where I came round today. Max asked me. He's climbing the walls. I see. No, you don't see. The poor man's at the end of his tether, the way you're carrying on. I warned you, didn't I? Well, how do you mean? Well, look at you. You've lost your grip on reality. You're totally obsessed. It's, it's as if nothing else matters to you anymore. Susanna, I'm worried about you. I just want a baby. Yes, and Max wants you to have a baby too. It's not just about you. You've got to think of other people as well. So slow down, Susanna, before you drive away the people who love you. What are you doing? You can't do that. Are we going to talk about this? Put the sign back. Lindsay, we need to talk. Who would I want to talk to someone like you for? Someone who goes around terrorising innocent people? What are you? Some sort of psychopath or something? Look, I was wrong. What? I was wrong, all right. Well, that's what you wanted to hear, isn't it? That's the very least I wanted to hear. For God's sake, what are you doing still carrying a gun? Protection. Protection from who? A bloody hairdresser. Oh, don't be soft. You know what happened with the Finnegans. It could kick off at any but time. that still doesn't explain why you put the gun to him. Peter wouldn't hurt a mouse, for God's sake. He was trying to make a show of you. Big deal. Look, I did that for you. Don't you dare say that. This isn't about me. This is about you. You're the one with the problem. You what? You think you own me, don't you? Like I'm a piece of property? Something you can show off like a shiny new car, but God help anyone if they scratch it. I'm sorry. So my body. You've ruined anything we had. Listen with you, Lindsay. Please. Just hear me out, eh? I was a dickhead. I shouldn't have done what I did. But that's just the way I am. Fight me corner. I won't give an inch to anyone. What a way to be. Would you think I like it, eh? Always looking over my shoulder all the time. I'm sick of it. My life's a mess. And it was even more of a mess before I met you, Linz. If I'd met you sooner, things might have been different. Can you tell us how many hours a day, on average, Cassie Charlton spent nursing her sick mother? An hour, maybe, uh, sometimes two. An hour? Two at most? Yeah, that's right. She'd sit with her in the evening after work. And for the rest of the time, it would fall to you or Elaine to look after Gladys Charlton? Well, there was always one of us there, but usually the both of us. Usually yourself or Elaine, but not Cassie Charlton. So Cassie Charlton can't have seen a tenth of it, never mind the half of it. Yet she would have us believe she was the angel of mercy. Objection, Your Honour. Counsel is trying to discredit a prosecution witness. With respect, Your Honour, I am merely trying to put Miss Charlton's evidence into perspective. Gladys Charlton needed full-time care, but Cassie Charlton was only with her an hour a day. Her evidence needs to be viewed in that light. I will allow it, Miss Reed. 
Continue, Mr. Harris. Thank you, Your Honour. Now, Mr. Johnson, what were those final weeks like for you and Elaine Johnson looking after your mother-in-law? We had to sit up all night and listen to Gladys moaning with the pain. There's nothing we could do for her. Looking back, Anne, I suppose if we knew then what we know now, getting help on that, then uh, things might have been different. How did you feel physically during this difficult, terrible time? It was draining, uh, exhausted. We, we had three kids to worry about as well. Uh, don't know how I managed. But why put yourself in that position? I mean, you didn't have to. Gladys Charlton had two daughters, didn't she? I never let Gladys down. All you have to battle on, don't you? Go on autopilot. I don't know how you do it. You just, you just keep going. So despite having to nurse and care for a terminally ill Gladys Charlton, despite having to look after three children, you never, as my learned friend would have it, lost it. You never crumbled. You never caved in under the pressure. No, I couldn't. I couldn't cave in. Gladys counted on me. We've already heard Detective Sergeant Cox say that he felt you to be a man of strong character. We've also heard evidence that Elaine Johnson was of a very fragile state of mind when she was interviewed by the police. In fact, she broke down a number of times during that interview. Seeing her mother suffering throughout those final weeks, how did Elaine react? Yeah, she was gutted. It was very hard for her. Mr. Johnson, did the strain of looking after her terminally ill mother ever cause Elaine Johnson to break down? Yeah. On one occasion? On more than one occasion? Uh, Mr. Johnson, answer the question. On more than one occasion? It would be fair to say she had lost it. She had caved in under the pressure. I suppose so. It all became too much for him. Now, let me turn to the night of your mother-in-law's death. Other than your mother-in-law, who else was with you in the, your home that night? Helene. Now, let's be absolutely clear about this. On the night in question, only you and Elaine Johnson were at home when Mrs. Charlton died. Yes. Mr. Johnson, were you in the room when Mrs. Charlton died? No. Where were you? I was in the kitchen. And when you came back from the kitchen, into your mother-in-law's room, Gladys Charlton was dead. Yeah. Who was in the room when you came back? Who was in the room, Mr. Johnson? Elaine, my wife. Mr. Johnson, did you murder Gladys Charlton? No. You've been good for me. Calmed me down, made me think about things. Wouldn't have liked to have known you before then. I'm being serious. I'm sorry I went off the deep end with Peter. It's just it. I feel dead protective towards you. I care. There's other ways of showing you care, you know. Yeah, I know. I'll remember in future. Who said we've got a future? Look, I'll walk away now if that's what you want. If that's what's going to make you happy. You said you want to change. Show me you're serious then. Get rid of the gun. There's a lot of dangerous people out there. The Finnegans. The gun goes. I mean it. Yeah, all right. And if you ever pull a stunt like that again, you won't see me for dust. Yeah. And thanks. What for? Giving me another chance. I won't mess up this time. I must be a sucker for punishment. Can't you read the sign? We're closed. Sorry. 
Hey, yeah. Hey, yeah. How do you run out the clinic? Okay, I'm going in on Friday. Do you like that? Not hanging around, are you? Katie, I want rid of it. God, you make it sound like a bunion or something. Katie, what are you on about? You were dead against me having the farms, kids. Yeah, that was before you were pregnant. And there's a baby in there now. Look, I don't want to think about that. I just want to get it over and done with and put all this behind me. So when are you going to tell the farm the deal's off? Saturday. After everything's sorted. And then I am out of here. Well, where are you going? Spain. Going on holiday. I suppose you'll need it. Casey, it's a one-way ticket. What? Well, I'll have nothing to keep me here, will I? I'm going to lose the bar. Barry Grant's not going to let me off the hook. My name's going to be mud with the Farnhams. So I might as well make a new start again. Out there. You're leaving Liverpool? For good? Yeah. I'm going to make a new start in Spain. It was a particularly debilitating illness, one which meant that Gladys would require a great deal of care. Did Gladys Charlton ever go into hospital after she was diagnosed with having cancer? Well, no, she, she wouldn't. Really? Why? Well, she was frightened. She wanted to be at home with all her family around. Her own home? Well, no, she lived on her own, but uh, she needed a full-time care, so uh, she couldn't stay in there. Well, where did she go then? She moved in with us. Into number five, Brookside Close? Yeah. And when was this? Sometime in April. Before you and Elaine were married? Well, we were supposed to get married around the time Gladys moved in. We were hoping to be over the operation by then. But we put it off. Why? Her being sick. I mean, Elaine wanted to wait until she had the all clear after the operation. An inconvenience for you, though, having to postpone your wedding. No, it's no big deal. We just got ourselves another date. And was it no big deal that you now had the terminally ill Gladys Charlton living in your house? And was it no big deal that you now found yourself having to nurse someone who you'd barely known six months? No, she, she was part of the family, wasn't she? I suggest to you, Mr. Johnson, that it was a big deal, a very big deal. No. Well, your idyllic life with your new fiancé has suddenly been severely disrupted. No, that's well, not... you now found yourself sharing your house, your life, with a woman dying of cancer. Well, that's true, but... A woman who refused to go into hospital or a hospice where, as Dr. Miller has already told us, she could clearly have got the treatment she needed. Gladys Charlton completely ruined your quality of life. She was a burden. No, she was well, that's never that why you murdered her, isn't it, Mr. Johnson? Because she was a burden? Well, no. We wanted her out of the way, didn't you? That's why you smothered her with a pillow, because you were sick and tired. You'd had enough. No, I killed her because she'd had enough. She couldn't take it anymore. You killed Gladys Charlton. I helped her die. That's what she wanted. And let's be absolutely clear, Mr. Johnson. Are you saying that you did kill Gladys Charlton? Yes, I did. Because that's what she wanted me to do. I have no further questions, Your Honour. Your Honour, in the light of Mr. Johnson's evidence, I would like to re-examine, if I may. Proceed, Your Honour. Are you OK? Take a moment to compose yourself. Could you explain what you meant when you said you had helped her to die? She wasn't a burden, but it's what she wanted. She said if the pain got too bad, then... She always said she wanted to die with dignity. She made me promise right from day one. Made you promise what? That I'd help her die. I had to help her out. If you'd have seen the pain that she was in, crying like a baby, I had to help her. She was counting on me. Can you understand that? You know, all these doctors, all these professionals, eh? they can all stand up here with their letters after their names, but they haven't really got a clue what it's all about. I know she would have been properly looked after in a hospice, and that they can give the people the, the comfort and the dignity and the hope that they deserve. But she was so frightened. We were all so frightened. 
the doctor. He wouldn't give her enough morphine for the pain. She was rolled up in a ball. But still, the doctor wouldn't listen to us. We had to sit there every night and watch her suffer. But still, he knew best. And that's why we had to give her the smack. Because no one else would help us. And all the time, she got worse. We knew she wanted to die. But you don't want to think about it, then. You just keep yourself going, hoping that in a few hours, in a few days, it'll all get better. That something will happen to make the nightmare end. We were only doing our best. Then we found the, the whiskey and the pills. She was keeping them in her handbag. That was her escape. Her way out. But she was too weak. She couldn't even swallow. And. Take this to help her do it herself. To kill herself. And we turned our back on her. We couldn't bring ourselves to do it. You know. Cowards. Yeah, cowards. You know. You talk about quality of life. Well, you should have seen Gladys Charm. Every breath that she took, she moaned with the pain. Every time she swallowed, a whole body shook in agony. But she still had the strength. To grab hold of that pillow. <laughs> and put it over her own face. <laughs> and then to take my hand. <laughs> I was looking bling down this time, class. <laughs> Get my presence. Next Wednesday's Brookside will be at its usual time of 8 o'clock. Next tonight, what's in a name? Carla and Benton have to talk in ER. I'll need to hoover around when you get back from school. Just down here, man. OK. Now, Simba will call around later with some tea from the chippy. They'll probably stay over, so uh, make sure you're on your best behaviour. 
No fighting. Don't use falling out. We will. I'm just checking my flight times. You're gonna have to tell him, Jack. I'm not telling anyone, not until I'm a thousand miles away. We're talking about your dad here. I don't care. I don't want anyone to find out where I've gone. The Farnham's, Barry, none of them. You're off your head. Well, what is there for me to stay for? Well, your family for a start. Your mum and dad, your mate. You can't just leave them. And what about this place? This place is dead and buried. Not yet, it isn't. What if Barry doesn't want all the money in one go? He might let you pay it off in instalments. I've tried that. So you think he's going to torture you? Of course he is. All right, well, why hasn't he done it already? Because he's enjoying himself, isn't he? He's making me sweat. Or well, maybe he's changed his mind. Oh, don't be stupid. Jackie, this isn't like you. Why aren't you fighting back? What? Well, I've never known you should just shrug your shoulders and walk away. Not from something you really cared about. Hey, hang on. Don't make it out that I'm just giving up here. Because I'm not. OK, so I've lost my bar. So what? I'm only 21. I'll move on, I'll get another bar. Start again somewhere else. In Spain. But this place means everything to you. It meant everything to me. But it's gone now. So I'm just going to pack my bags and I'm going to disappear. I'm doing Elaine Johnson. Cos I tell you what, she had the right idea. I didn't see her hanging around and it all came on top. I look lousy. I feel lousy and all. Shouldn't you be checking the other end? I think we got about half an hour sleep last night, you know. You don't have to tell me. I was lying next to you, remember? All that stuff in court about Gladys, what she went through. It's got to me. I can't get it out of my head. Oh, love. I'm in the same boat as Mick, aren't I? Well, how do you mean? Well, waiting on a verdict, not knowing how long I've got. Now, what have I told you about looking on the black side? You know what I mean. Now, listen, I don't want to hear the word cancer mentioned again. Well, not until you've been the doctors and got your results. I mean, what's the point of worrying about it when you've probably got nothing to worry about at all? Now, oh, come on, let's get yourself moving. I wonder how Mick's getting on. Probably halfway to Walton by now. Jackie, well, knock someone off. You've got to face the consequences, haven't you? I don't think we'll be seeing him around here again. I feel dead sorry for him. Casey killed someone. Yeah, but who thought he was helping her? Oh, so he says. And so would I if I was facing a murder charge. Are you gonna go up there? Nah, I think I'll hang around here. I'm all right, you know. He's enough to babysit me. I'm not. Oh, not much, you're not. You haven't left me size. I'm just worried that Barry Grant might start hassling you. All the Farnhams. <sighs> Max and Susanna. Oh, they won't be around till her peak fertility. So you're just gonna get off? You're not gonna tell them the deal's off? Of course I'm gonna tell them. Well, when? I've told you. Saturday after I've been in the clinic. <sighs> they're me. They're gonna hate me. Tell me you feel sorry for them. Not after the way they've hounded you over the last few months. They haven't hounded me. What? You are slagging them for England the other week? Yeah, I know, but... They're all right, you know. They're nice people. It's just desperate, same as I was. Jackie, you can't have this baby. I know I can't. I've got no intentions. Good. Make sure you keep it that way. Look, I know you're only worrying about me, but you don't have to. As of tomorrow, don't be a baby. Probably won't be a bar either. Well, the mortis one's for the chippy and uh, the rest are for the house. But you know that anyway, don't you? Yeah. And uh, this has got my money in there, uh, my bank cards and stuff. And they, uh, no spending spins, okay? Okay. Thanks, son. I think we better get going. Yeah. Look, uh, now remember, look after the gemma phone, won't you? Don't forget that. I won't. Dad, I made you a good luck card. I'll be with you in a minute. Excuse me. Yeah, all right. 
Ow! Mineral water, please. I was wondering when you'd show your face. Um, that's too powerful. Thank you. Anything else I can get you? A couple of fire lighters, maybe? There you are. I'll nip over the garage and get you a gallon of petrol. Save you the hassle. There's no good shouting in public, you know. It's not good for business. Me and you better have a talk in the office now. I'm not going. Oh, don't be soft. No, straight up. One more day isn't going to make any difference. Let's just go straight to court. I want to be there for Mick. Now, hang on. What if there is something wrong with you? Well, shouldn't you know? Then you can do something about it. Yes, I know, love, but the thing Never is... Never mind, but... You're going for them test results, so I've got to drag you there myself. <sighs> I can't. Well, you'll have to. Well, you could end up like poor Gladys, six foot under, pushing up the daisies. Come on. Do you take me for some kind of mug or something? It was sorted, but the deal I had fell through. So I take a beating. I'm running all over Liverpool trying to sort out Jock McTavish and his brother. And now you tell me you're not going to pay me. Look, you don't have to keep reminding me. I know you're on the Finnegan's out of town. Big wow. You what? Well, you don't have to constantly keep trying to prove how hard you are. You know exactly how hard I am, love. Oh, big Barry Grant. My gun's bigger than yours. I've heard it all before. Just get on with it. Do whatever you came to do and disappear. You thought you were going to get away with this, didn't you? You thought you were just going to flutter your eyelashes at me, tell me how sorry you were, and I'd let you off. Oh, don't flatter yourself. For old times' sake. I did everything I could to get that money together. Sounds like it. I did. Do you think I was born yesterday? You haven't got a clue, have you? This bar is my life, and it's me dad's and our mate's livelihoods. It's our whole family. I built it up from nothing. I've worked myself into the ground since I was a kid to get to here. And you think I'd risk losing everything by trying to get one over on some gangster? I tried to get that money for you, and I failed. So go on, talk to the police. Blew the whole thing up. I can't do any more than I've already done. There you go. Milk, one sugar, right? Yeah, thanks. Hi. Hi. You OK? Yeah. How long do you think they'll be? Oh, it's hard to say. They could be all afternoon. But they could call us back tomorrow. It's weird, isn't it? What? To think of them all sat there around the table. Talking about me. What kind of man I am. What I've done. Whether I deserve to see my kids go. It's never an easy decision to make. But there won't be many of them arguing my side, then. Not after yesterday. Yes, well, God only knows how that's going to affect things. But you can make a pretty good guess. I just wish you'd warned me beforehand. I didn't know myself till it all came out. <laughs> No, but you knew you'd lied to me time and time again. I mean, come off it, Mick. You told me you weren't even in the room. Look, Ellen, I, I know I lied to you, and I'm sorry. But I'm not sorry about what I said yesterday. At least my kids know I told the truth now. And they don't think their old man is a liar and a hypocrite. And theirs is the only judgment I really care about. Look, I want to come in with you. No. One of us has got to go to court to support me, so you better go. But are you going to be all right? I've told you I'll be fine. Hey. I'll give for you. So what did you do to get the money? It doesn't matter now. They wouldn't pay me the money up front, so the deal's off. Come on. You can tell me. Why? So you can get some kind of kick out of it? I just want to know what kind of lengths you'd be prepared to go to. OK, I'll tell you. I got pregnant by Max Farnham for money. 
sacco di noffoie. Let me get this straight. You were prepared to have Max Farnham's baby so that you could get the money to pay me? Yeah. You were that desperate to get rid of the Finnegans? Yeah. Well, how far gone are you? What does it matter? I'm not going to have it now anyway. They wouldn't pay me all the money up front. Hiya. Don't believe it. Come to put the final nail in the coffin, have you? What? Tell you what, like father, like daughter, isn't it? What's she on about? Have you brought the matches, or have you just come to get turned on by him acting like he's out the local mafia? What's going on? Look, Lynch, why don't you leave us a minute? I've got a bit of business to sort out. Yeah, go on. Run along, Lynn. Do what your fella says. I'm sure Barry won't mind me hanging around. OK. I've got a proposition for you. You owe me 15 grand, right? 15 grand that you now can't raise. Now I could do what I said I was going to do and burn this place to the ground. But that wouldn't get us anywhere, would it? So I'm prepared to waive your debt on one condition. You sign the bar over to me. What? You'll get to keep 50% of the profits as long as you manage the bar in the way that you'd have been doing. You must be joking. All right, then. I'll torture you. You'll have 100% of nothing. Why? Why what? Why not take all of it and put some yes man in? Something you can have at your beck and call. Maybe I'm getting soft on my old age. Or maybe you remind me of myself a few years back when I was trying to get something off the ground. I'm not like you. If this place means half what you say it means to you, well, then you'll be an asset, won't you? But what about me dad? The boss half is as well. So? I'm not interested in any excess baggage. You'll have to sort him out. Well, what happens if I say no? Well, it's bye-bye to Barbrookie then, isn't it? And I'm sure you wouldn't want that after all the work you've put into it. So? I'll get in touch with me solicitor, get him to draw the papers up. I'll be in touch. Honest, Jack, I don't know anything about his business. No. Well, if I was you, I'd start finding out. Make sure I knew what I was getting myself into. Right, then. What was all that about? What? That, with Jackie Dixon. Oh, don't worry about it. Hang on a minute. You threatened to burn the bar down, blackmailing him to hand over the business, and you tell me not to worry about it. Look, there's no need for you to get involved. Jackie knows the score. She doesn't need you to fight her battles for it. I just didn't like what I saw in there. Yeah, but you like where it gets you, don't you? I'm going back to the hotel. You can come back if you want it. That's me. So a little prayer, eh? Oh, sit down, will you? You're making me nervous. I don't want to sit down. All right, well, come and lie down, then. I just want to get this clear in my head. What? Well, the Jackie Dixon business. The 15,000. Oh, well, you're still not going on about that. Barry, why didn't you give her more time? She could have got that money together, you know. 
Because I didn't want to, all right. Why? Because I didn't. I don't understand. That's because you're missing a point. Jackie raises the 15 grand. I don't get the bar. So you never wanted to raise that money in the first place? Just forget about Jackie Dixon, eh? Come and have a lie down. How far would you have gone to stop her raising that money? What? I want to know. How far would you have gone to stop Jackie Dixon raising that money? Mug someone? What are you talking about? I want to know. Would you have mugged someone to stop Jackie Dixon raising that money? Just leave it, eh? Peter had, had that money for Jackie. It was you, wasn't it? You stole his money. You took his cash, the money he was going to use for me and him. And it was me who told you when and where. You bastard, hey. you lousy bastard! Just hang on a minute. As I remember rightly, me and you was rolling around in your mars when lover boy got mugged. So how could I have had anything to do with it? You only cared about yourself. Don't tell me what I care about, all right? You've ruined everything. What if I have? I never meant to. Honest. to believe me when I say that. That no matter what I've done, what's gone on, I never meant to hurt you. There must be some sort of precedent in these kind of cases. I mean, this is something that's I love you, all right? Still with us then, eh? You're bearing up, Hosan. I just want it over with now, Ben. Yes, yes, of course, of course. Well, I'm sure justice will prevail. Where's Simba, doesn't he come? Yeah, he's following me on. He won't be long. He had an appointment he had to go to. Uh, Would you give us a few minutes, please? Yes, of course. I just hope he's had a hearty breakfast. What that poor man's been through, it just doesn't bear thinking about. It's the kids I feel sorry for. Not against Mick, like, but you can't go around just knocking people off, no matter how sick they are. Even when they've begged you to? Oh, I couldn't kill someone. No matter how much pain they were in. You know what you mean, love? You see, I believe you go when you get the nod from him upstairs. No matter what's wrong with you. And I'll tell you something else and all. They can hook me up to every bloody machine in the Royal, cos I'm not asking anybody to knock me off. I'm sticking around till a bit at end. It's a brave thing to embrace death. Even braver thing to do what Mick did. He relieved another person's suffering. You shouldn't be punished for that. Yes, well, I'd better see if there's any news. Don't think he'll take my appeal, do you? Well, what happened yesterday was a major shock to his system. Eleanor, um, if you get the chance, could you give that to Leo and Gemma for me? Yeah, of course. It um, just explains a few things, huh? I understand. Me? to say thanks for yesterday. What? Tell me the truth. Yeah, well, I couldn't live with myself. Uh, yeah. No. Uh, look, I'll see you in there. Grand versus Johnson, fourth one. Right. Here we go. Come on. Ready for us. What now? Come on, mate. Now's as good a time as any. What is it about you, eh? What? That keeps me coming back for more. Do you really want me to answer that? Well, you think I'd learn from everything my mum went through? Hey, don't compare me to your old fella. Well, maybe it's in me. In my blood. Can you inherit something like that? An attraction to dodgy blokes? You're off your head, you. Well, it'll be worth it. What will? Well, everything. What I've put Peter through. It'll be worth it in the end. I wish Simba had already up and get here. Yeah, she's got him to the main event. You're OK. Glad it's coming to an end. We can guess which way you wanted to go, eh, love? To be quite honest with you, I'm sorry I started this. Oh, 
have you been? I've been worried sick. Has anything happened yet? No. What did the doctor say? I've got to go back next week. What for? For another tube of preparation H. I've got the all clear. Oh, babe! <laughs> yeah. So all we've got to worry about now is me. Will the defendant please rise? Madam Fourperson, will you please stand? Have the jury reached a verdict on which you are all agreed? We have. On the count that charges the defendant with murder, do you find the defendant guilty or not guilty? You getting in? Yeah. I've ordered champagne. Who'd have thought, eh? Me, in a five-star hotel, drinking champagne in a bath. Hiya. Come in. Oh, sorry, I won't be a sec. <laughs> Next Thursday at 8.30, the first of a new series of Bloom looks at orchids. Next tonight, the return of dispatches with a report on anti-Catholic feeling and intimidation by some members of the Royal Ulster Constabulary. It's not porridge. Yay. <laughs> Listen, how would you fancy staying off school today? Spend some more time with your outfit. Yes. yes. <laughs> so that's it. Barry Grant Town's bar, Brookie. Looks that way, yeah. And you're still going to stick around? Well, he made me an offer I couldn't refuse. 50% of the profits, I'd be stupid to turn me back on that. But, Jackie, your bar? I can't believe you just let someone come in and take it off you like that. Less than the end of a pile of ashes. So, if Barry Grant turns the bar and you're getting 50% for managing it, where's that leave your dad? No way. It's just me and Barry. What? Barry doesn't want me dad involved. You are joking. I wish I was. But I'll sort him out. I'll make sure he doesn't go short. He's gonna go off his head. Best than his only daughter doing a runner to the Costa Blanca, though, isn't he? So when are you gonna tell him? God knows. I've got a couple of other things to clear up first, haven't I? Like telling the farms or little deals off. You're all doing the right thing, Jack. Do you reckon? 
Somehow I didn't think Max and Suzanne are gonna see it that way. Oh, we shouldn't have started any of this. I really do. You can take it back! All of it! I don't want any of it in the house! You might as well keep it. Oh, as a reminder of all the good times. No, thanks. Do you know what you've done? You've made me feel cheap. As if I'd sell myself for nothing. Just a bit of sparkle. And you've got all the dickheads round here saying, look at here hanging around with Barry Grant. I didn't plan this, you know. I bet you didn't. I didn't. I came up here to get away from everything. I was sick of going ten rounds with me missus every night. Next thing, Jackie Dixon's asking me to run some plazzy gangsters out of town, and then you're standing there, legs up to your neck, giving me the come on. Don't you say it was me. Don't you dare say it was me. Oh, come off it. You hounded me. You were bloody relentless. You wouldn't let me get away from you. Don't kid yourself, Snow White. Engaged or not, you were sending out the signals. <laughs> you knew what you were getting into. You can't deny it. That was part of the attraction. Katie. What? You've won a maid? A case that's brilliant. That's exactly what I said. Well, I don't know about one. More like scraped through by the skin of our teeth. What do you mean? When we've got a spare half hour, I'll explain the term perverse verdict to you. I think that translates as a million to one chance. Oh, uh, so it makes you look lucky then? <laughs> I'll say. Still, that's as good a reason as any to celebrate. Would you mind opening this, eh? Open a champagne. Yeah, my pleasure. <sighs> Hi, Mick. How are you? Hi, kids. Hiya. Look, uh, don't interrupt anything. Oh, don't be seen. You're not interrupting. Perfect timing. Katie, bring some more paper cups. Uh, no, thanks. We won't stay. Uh, Gemma just brought something around for you. Oh, thanks for helping me, Dad. Ta. Oh, well, that's lovely. Thank you. Look, uh, I didn't get much chance to speak to you yesterday. I'm sorry for lying to you. Standing in that dark, waiting for the verdict, really brought it home to me. What I'd done, I could have jeopardised everything. Well, the gods must have been smiling down on us. Uh, well, we'll get off. Are you sure you went to stay for a drink? No, thanks anyway, but uh, I said I'd meet somewhere. OK. Bye, Mick. Yeah, I'll meet. Bye. Bye. Yeah. Ready? Yeah. I did think the marriage was over. Honest. I thought it was dead and buried. So when did you decide to resurrect her? Christmas Day. Sitting there. Watching me two little girls open the presents. I took one look at them and then I went back on everything I'd said. Christmas Day. That's where you found me from. Your house. I wanted to tell you the score, but I couldn't. I heard your voice and then I just dried. And then I was going to tell you when I came back up, but... But what? Well, the whole thing started up again, didn't it? So you let me go along, thinking everything was hunky-dory. God, I'm shallow. Swanning round like Lady Muck, telling everyone I'm jacking my job in. Gonna be a singer. But you could still do that. What does it feel like watching someone feed off lies? I never lied to you. Oh, come off it, Barry. You let me go along thinking we were heading somewhere. I mean, look at me. A single mother, shacked up with a mum and dad, holding down a no-hope job and a chippy. No wonder I was dazzled by your bloody pound signs. Oh, I thought it was wonderful. This fellow who everyone was terrified of and everyone knew. <laughs> you wanted to be with boring old Lindsay Corkill. But I did. You're a liar. You build yourself up like some bloody knight in shining armour. But you're not. You're just like everyone else. But your nice house. Your wife. Your 2.4 children. And your little bit of stuff on the side. What kills me about Peter? He'd have done anything for me. Anything. 
but I didn't want to know. I threw it all back in his face. I broke the poor lad's heart for a liar. Hiya. Oh, hi. Uh, no work today? No, I'm um, I'm going away this afternoon, just for a couple of days. All oh, right. <laughs> Trying to escape the couple from hell, eh? Well, you're not that bad. Well, <laughs> most of the time, anyway. Listen, um, do you fancy coffee? No, I'm sorry, I've got stuff to do. All right, OK. All right, well, I'll be in touch. Uh, it's the week after next, yeah? Yeah. Actually, Max, I will have that coffee. I've still got a bit of time to spare. Oh, great. Um, all right, well, I'll just uh, pay for this. OK. Yeah, I've been celebrating myself, you know. All right. Well, I've had a bit of a time with myself over the past few days, and, um, what do you mean? Well, I didn't want to say anything while it's hours, and I know you had enough on your plate, and all that, but, uh, well, well, you know, these piles have been suffering with. Hmm. Well, I finally went to Quacks the other day to get them sorted out, and he said he wants to do all kinds of tests on me. What for? Well, I don't know, that's it. I'm terrified. I thought my number was up. You do? Yeah, straight up, I thought I had cancer. What's her name? Who? Your wife. Pam. Pam. I piss you. She can handle herself. I suppose she knows all about me. Bet she called me all the stupid cows going, eh? She doesn't do that. Oh, no. My wife understands me. <laughs> That's original. She does. I know it might sound stupid, but she does. We suit each other. What's she like? Blonde. Miss New Brighton, 1993. It was 1992, actually. And it was Letchworth, not New Brighton. We got the right idea. She's a good looking girl. And I like her. She's more Cheshire than Manor Park. But we have a laugh. She could have given monkeys what I do. As long as there's money coming in. She's got a nice big house, two kids. She's happy. I'm happy. Or at least I was until your dad offered to take me for a drink to Jackie Dicko's. And she's another one, isn't she? Not happy with what she's got. She had a nice little hairdressing salon there. More than any girl could want round here. Well, you know what I mean, don't you? Pam always knew what she wanted. And now she's got it. Me. I've always wanted something else. Problem is, I still don't know what it is. Well, why didn't you tell me straight away? Why did you let me think that you were... What? Available? Single? Yeah, all right. God, Barry, I sat in a restaurant in Birmingham and actually asked you to marry me. How could you have let me do that? All right. So I should have told you. But when was the right time to tell you, eh? When I first met you? When you were with Peter? And you couldn't keep your eyes off me? Are you? I'm Barry. Some old mate of your aunt, fellas. Now, in case you're thinking that we might be irresistibly attracted to each other, don't bother, cos I'm married with two kids. But I'm not that happy. I'm looking for something else. I wonder, could you be it? Is that what I should have said? No, of course not. And if I had told you at any time, what would you have done, eh? Would you have settled for the odd few days here and there? Or a week somewhere, if we were lucky? I mean, that's not fair to either of us, is it? Yeah, but you chose, didn't you? You decided for both of us. Don't you understand? That might have been enough. Or were you frightened? Was that it? You were frightened? that I might have turned you down, that I wouldn't have agreed to see you when it suited you, or that I was one of those good Liverpool girls who wanted marriage and security more than a real relationship. And if I had told you, you would have been prepared to keep it up, would you? But you didn't tell me, though, did you? So you'll never know. Oh, okay. Still 
round up. A boat. <laughs> Maybe I'll never get pregnant. Well, I, I suppose you've got to give these things time. Mad, isn't he? What? Well, what we've been doing. I'm surprised you've stuck it this long. Susanna and I, well, we're not the easiest couple to get along with. No. <laughs> Oh, for trying. <laughs> Putting up with us. Actually... You've really kept it going these last few months. Without you and what you're doing for us, I really think she would have gone under. You should have gone straight round the doctor, sir. You've probably aged ten years, don't worry. <sighs> it's easy to say that now. I'll tell you what, Miss, I was terrified. If it was cancer, I didn't want to know. You know what, sir? The most sickening thing about what happened with Gladys was it didn't have to be like that. You knew then what you know now, eh? But you've definitely got the all clear, though. Yeah, that's all it was. A bad case of pirates. I still, I didn't think I'd ever say this, but I want to propose a toast. To the grapes of wrath. <laughs> to rubber rings. <laughs> and all who sit in them. <laughs> I don't know. She sees having this baby as the solution to all the problems. Losing Matthew and Emily and the fact she can't have children herself. Is that why you've gone through with it? Just to keep Susanna happy? First, maybe, but now I want it just as much as she does. It must be difficult for you to understand how desperate we are, but once you have a child of your own, you'll appreciate how it feels. <laughs> you know, I've been wondering what this baby's gonna look like. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. What color its eyes will be, whether it'll look like Matthew or Emily. What made you choose me? Well, lots of reasons. You're young, bright. Also, we knew you were a hard-nosed businesswoman. I'm not a total bitch, you know. I'm not just out for myself. Oh, don't get the wrong idea. I, I know most people around here think you're ruthless, yeah. But <laughs> so did we at first. Well, now, what you've done for us is the most generous, compassionate... Look, Max, I've got a confession to me. I'm just as surprised as you are that things have got this far. And, well, to be honest with you, I've been thinking things Jackie, over. What are you doing? I've been up to the flat and everything. We're going to be late. I'm sorry, I didn't. No, no, I'm sorry. Uh, we were talking business, you know? Yeah, well, she should have left half an hour ago. Yeah, well, like I said, um, I'm sorry for bending you. It's OK. Be in touch, eh? Yeah. I'll see you later. You're gonna miss your appointment. I didn't realise the tag. You shouldn't tell him, did you? About the baby. No, the abortion. Casey, if he found out I was pregnant, I think he'd still be sitting there finishing off his coffee. He'd be down the clinic like a shot, dragging me off the operating table. Come on. What are you still doing here? You know when you were in Bangkok with my tickle? Oh, don't try and turn all this on me, Barry. Look, I'm not perfect, but... Don't be soft. I didn't mean anything like that. I mean, when they took Carly away... What did you think? How did you feel? And what's that got to do with anything? How do you think I felt? There we were in... We were terrified. I've told you before. Kylie weed herself. It's a miracle I didn't. Not knowing where she was, what was happening to her. Not knowing she couldn't understand anything. How could she? I didn't even know what was going on. Not being there to hold her. To tell her everything was going to be all right. How do you think I felt? I wasn't there for her when she needed me. My two were only little. One and three. Makes you wonder, doesn't it? Well, with what I do, you know, what would happen if... I don't know what happened, really, but... 
One day I just woke up and I wanted a kid. I was desperate. Let the psychos have a go at that, eh? Anyway, I had one. Stephen. Frightened the pants off me. Things didn't work out with his mother, Fran, and she took him away. It's my own fault, I suppose. I'd love to see him again. He'd be five now. So when Pam came along, it was a bad time. She listened. She wanted kids. So what are you trying to tell me? That deep down you're all hard? What I'm trying to tell you is that when it came down to it, I chickened out. I couldn't go to do with it. But if I had, she'd have fought tooth and nail. She'd have skimmed me for everything I'd got. The house, a load of money. But that wouldn't have mattered. She'd take the kids and she'd do everything she could to stop me seeing them. Not because she's hard or because she doesn't care about me. But that's what you do, isn't it? When your husband leaves you for another woman. You sit around tennis clubs or yoga classes telling each other what sods men are and congratulating each other on how strong they've been, not letting us walk all over them. Anyway, for all the people say about me, there is a bit of me that wants to care for people. What I do, I only arm people who wouldn't give a toss what they do to me or you. People I don't know with, with no morality. And I couldn't bear the thought of not seeing those two little girls. I'm trying to be like, I don't know, like one of those sad, tongue-tied dads. Desperately trying to give the kids a day out on a Sunday afternoon, going to pictures or something. Maybe you should have thought about that before you tried to charm me into bed. Oh, but I did. But you... You see something. And however hard you try. However much you know it's going to end in tears, you still go for it. And I know it was right, Lens. You and me. And you do too, I just... I never meant it to go this far. But it did though, didn't it? And I'm the one who's having to grin and bear it. What are you going to say next? Recommend a good yoga class? OK. But what if it was the other way around? Could you leave Carly to be with me? No, of course not. No. Oh, you've no idea what it was like in Bangkok. Not knowing. Terrified all the time. But I always felt that whatever they did to me, I could have survived it. As long as I saw Kylie again and made everything all right for her. She was mine. She's my. Well, it's your job, isn't it? It's what you're there for. You can't let them go. You can never let them go. Go now, eh? A couple of hours and it'll all be over with. So when are you going back down? Tonight. Are they expecting you? Yeah. How about you? What about me? Go back to lover boy. These things could have been different. It's a bit too late now, isn't it? Yeah. Too late.
Jack Lee Dixon. Come on. You'll be all right. Katie, I can't. I can't do it. What are you talking about? I'm really sorry, but I've changed my mind. I'm not going to go through with it. Casey, I can't go through with it. You've got to. I can't get back in there. Well, have you yet? I can't, and I can't do it to the Farnums. They don't run about the baby. But that's just the point, though, isn't it? It isn't just mine to get rid of, it's theirs too. Jackie, please think about this. Casey, I have thought. Just for once, I'm going to do something for someone else. Something that isn't just about money or a deal for saving some stupid business. I'm going to do it for them, Casey. I've made up my mind. And I'm going to have the baby. Dixon and Molly, alias Diane Keane, have a light lunch with Mel and Sue. That's at 12.30 on Monday. Next on 4, it's Friday Comedy and lots of How's Your Father with Ellen. Right after Brookside. Are they? They're fine. Yeah, for the moment. There'll be no more squeezing yourself into machino soon, will there? Casey, back off, will you? Please. No. I wouldn't know what'll happen if you change your mind again. I won't. It's made up for good. Hold on. We were sat in an abortion clinic the other day. Yeah, okay. I was a bit mixed up. A bit. Casey, I thought I'd lost everything I'd work for. The bar had virtually gone, but at least I've got half the profits, which gives me something to stay around for. Oh, yeah. I'm working for Barry Grant's and Realtree to look forward to, isn't it? Yeah. Well, once I've had this baby, I'm going to make sure I get that bar back under my control. She went in fine. <laughs> Happy as... <sighs> Got another woman, has he? Yeah. And a marriage certificate. And two kids. <laughs> hey, <laughs> all right, love, you'll be all right. <laughs> I might be a bit late tonight. I've got a law society meeting. No doubt you'll be the talk of the court circuit. Having saved Mick Johnson from, from the gallows. My old boss has already been on the phone asking me how I managed to nobble the jury. Well, I must admit, I was pretty gobsmacked that he walked free. Yes. I think the judge will be dining out on that verdict for some time. 
So, back down to earth now, eh? I'm afraid so. Back to petty criminals, drink drivers and a few scrappy custody rattles. Like mine and Bell's, you mean? Yours isn't scrappy. It's bitter. Ah, yes. I remember it well. Hello. Oh, hi, Louise. How are you? Um, no, I'm afraid you've just missed her. Yeah, 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 you could try it at the office. OK, bye. What are you playing at? I didn't want to talk. Eleanor, it might be important. I don't want to talk about it. There you go, kid. Better out than in, eh? Not exactly your thing, is it? Comfort in hysterical women. Hey, I've lost plenty of ankies like this. It's a shame you never got me any more for Christmas, innit? Oh, I never thought for one minute he was married. I know, love. It was a facer for me and all. Grants you married, eh? That's like, I don't know, your mother taking much stepping or something. Or me managing not to make a mess of a relationship, eh? Hey. Not having you blaming yourself for any of this. You won't have to. When my mum finds out, she'll be like the cat that got the cream. Yeah, well, don't be worrying about it ever now. Listen, you're not the first girl to get involved with some fellow who conveniently forgot to mention that he was married, don't you? <laughs> hey? And you won't be the last, love. You were always up front with him, weren't you? With him, maybe be. Pity I can't say I was with Peter. Well, Mister told you in the end, eh? He didn't. I found a picture in his wallet. Oh, I don't know, Dad. He said... When he left, I was determined to be angry with him and I wasn't going to just give in and let him... I felt as if he used me. He said, I could not believe that if things had been different. But he didn't tell me. And if I hadn't found that picture in his wallet, he never would have done. I know he wouldn't. Oh. Oh, what? Well, I don't know, love. I haven't got a clue, but. How come you were looking in his wallet anyway? I mean, I don't know, but maybe you suspected something. Looking for clues for his mysterious life in Birmingham. It wasn't like that, Dad. He told me to get some money to pay for room service. That's very trusting of him. And he told you to go and look in his wallet, knowing that that photo was there. Or do you think he'd forgotten about it? Worth thinking about, isn't it, love? I mean, I could be wrong, but maybe that was his way of telling you. Not an easy thing, is it? Face to face. Mm -hmm. It's for you. Thank you. Looks official. Haven't you got any work to do? Plenty. Ah, oh, everything's me. Flaming neck. What is it? Motley Flaming March Bank. The bank have only put a stop on all my plastic, haven't they? Oh, Ross. You can't keep blaming Motley for your predicament. How'd you make that up? She's took me to the cleaners. Wouldn't surprise me if she was on crime watch in a couple of months under an alias. Frida the Fraudster. I really do think you're getting this totally out of proportion, Elsa. Yeah, well, I don't. Now, if you'll excuse me, I've just got to go down to my bank and grovel. Is he all right? He will be. I found these down the side of the couch. Oh, yes, interesting. Who's are they? Uh, d d I'll deal with it, Julia. Shall I ask Ron if he knows? No, 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 leave it to me. Thank you. Hmm. 
cup of here for you, love. Nice chalky biscuit. Oh, thanks, Dad. Oh, I'm ready for a nice cup of... Oh, no. Dad, thanks for... Well, you know. No problem. But don't listen to me. Hey, shouldn't you be at work? You ought to be opening up now. I was going to spend a few minutes with my daughter. I'm the boss, aren't I? Anyway, Mick won't even notice. I'm too busy celebrating his freedom to be worried about the trippy. Listen, do you know what's up with this machine thing? Your mother seems to have turned it off in the middle of a wash. I don't know. I know she was doing some washing this morning before she went to work. Is it plugged in? Oh. Ah, there we go. Oh, flaming Lord, look at that! Oh, God. No wonder she's turned it off. It's flaming knackered, that. <sighs> well, maybe my mum can have a word with Simba to get him to come round and have a look. More expense. Dad, you, you know what you were saying about Barry wanting me to see the photo? Well, even if he did it, it doesn't change anything, does it? It's still finished. And even if I wanted to carry on... He wouldn't have me. Well, not the way I want, anyway. And I don't blame him, really. Lindsay Corkill from Manor Park. It's all in the past for him, isn't it? The close, La Luce. He's moved on, now. Nice big house in the Midlands. All those clubs. Well, that's nothing to do with people like me, is it? That's something I learned a lot later in life than you, love. It took our little Jimmy dying to make me realise that I couldn't follow where Barry Grant was going. You and me, kid, were just average. You just gotta accept who you are and, well, just make the best of it. What time will you be home? I've got the Law Society meeting, remember? I'll bring some brochures back and we can talk holidays. Oh, yeah? What are you thinking of? Oh, I don't know. Somewhere different. The Maldives are getting a good write-up. Well, we'd have to talk about what the beef are down to do. That sea pizzas and Pepsi. That's all kids need, isn't it? Will that be enough for Louise? Well, she might want to go. Well, maybe she won't be around by the spring. Look. I know you're not very keen on the subject of Louise at the moment, but I, I think it's a bit off not talking to her. It's all very awkward. She's trailing around Reading looking for her father. You could be helping her. There's no point. What? She won't find him. Jackie, are you sure you do the right thing having this baby? Katie, how many times have I got to explain? But you're going to start to show soon. You've got to think what you're going to tell people like your dad. I'll sort that. And what about Rachel? She's back tomorrow and she's already suspicious something's going on. Hi, Morning. Julia. Hi, Julia. Morning. Rachel is the least of me worries. I've still got to tell my dad that he's no longer got half a business. Yeah, you should tell him soon. I will. And what about Max and Susanna? When are you going to tell them about the happy event? Later. Look, I thought you were supposed to be on my side. OK, I am. Honest. See ya. See ya. Hi, Katie. Can you just give her round here a good clean for me? It'll be kids again, will Oh, you'd think they'd never heard a little bit, wouldn't you? I wouldn't even look at her the way she's treated you. If I was you, I'd forget all about that Lindsay Corkill. I'm doing my best, Julia. Doesn't mean it's easy, though, does it? <sighs> but you have to let them go, look. Otherwise, they'll use you. Just like that Jack Sullivan messing me around. Yeah. You want my advice? Go on. Get yourself a wok. A wok? You mean as in a big round Chinese pub? And I must say, they're right, you know. These do taste a lot better. And what have you cooked in it? Oh, well, I'm not very adventurous yet. But last night, I tried a boiled egg. In a wok? Well, there's no point in having one if I'm not going to use it, is there? Forget it, love. Morris. 
Hey, hey, listen. I hate to wallow in someone else's misery, but good news. The jury made a mistake. Nice one, Jimmy. Look, you know the Blue Friar, the most popular chippy around here? Yeah. It's only burned down, isn't it? Fire engines all over the place. Oh, nice one. Yours are terrible. Hey, look, how much business did they take off the pizza parlor when they own nothing? Mm. Loads. Well, look, the customers have got to go somewhere. So if we get loads of flyers out ASAP, they'll come in here. Looks like things are really looking up here. Mm. Mm. Might be for them. Oh, love, there's plenty more fish in the sea. Or fat, if you're working here. Dad, you won't say anything to me, Mum, will you? I can just hear her now going on how she told me so, how she warned me. And how you didn't bother to listen. Well, it's bad enough everyone around here thinking I'm last for the way I treated Peter. Couldn't stand anyone knowing about Barry. Lindsay, I've told you. There are some things that your mother is best at not knowing about. And you're right. I know her, I can just see it. She wouldn't be able to control herself. She'd go straight into one of those I told you so modes. <laughs> so listen, if you don't say anything, I won't. Okay? And I'm sure Granty won't be spreading it around too much either. Thanks, Dad. Hey, careful, love. Any more thanks today? I'll have to get a new halo. <laughs> to Birmingham at Christmas. Hmm? Well, the one thing that it taught me of is that you've grown up and you're well old enough to make your own mistakes now. So, whatever you want to do, it's up to you. Not me and not your mother. You. But listen, one bit of advice I will give you. Give it a few days, eh? It'll feel a lot better. Yes, sir. What can I get you? Just a flying visit. <laughs> well, how did you know where I lived? I found out from Ron. You seem to be keeping pretty busy. <laughs> well, Beatty insists that I do the brasses every day. I've only just managed to talk her out of making me do the step as well. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like one of the good old-fashioned sort. Oh, she is. Still, I'm sure you didn't come here to talk about cleaning. No, no, I, I just wondered whether these gloves were yours. Oh, yes, they are. Thank you. I, um, I wonder what had happened to those. They were found under the settee in the bundler. Well, thank you very much for returning them. You needn't have gone to all this trouble. No trouble at all. I'm glad you got them back. Right. Well, um, I'd better leave you to it. Bye. David, would you like a cup of tea? Are you sure? Come on in. Yes, I'd be delighted. Can I have a cheese roll, please, Mike? Yeah, no problems. Thank you. Thanks. Have you eaten in there? No, I haven't got time. Alan has gone off to court and the phone hasn't stopped. Mind you, it's must have been here, Louise. She's phoned about every 20 minutes. Why? What's the problem? Oh, I don't know. She's pretty desperate to talk to her and she switched her mobile off. Anyway, we told you know who, but you know what yet? No, not yet. I don't know why you're putting it off. All right, I'll go over now. I'm still trying to work myself up to talking to me dad. Big old Katie, 175, please. Oh, there you go. Thanks. That's a look, anyway. Best of luck with what? Nose disease. Listen, Jack, never work, please. Why have I got the feeling this is going to involve money? If you advance me £50, I'll be able to pay Ben that. Oh, come on, Christmas has really stretched me. I mean, you're pleasant alone. Oh, you mean the cheap bath oil? Well, it's the thought that counts, in it? And the money I'm on in here. Mike, don't try and pile on the guilt. All right, I'm sorry, but oh. Jack, please, come on, I'll pay you back. £50, I'll give you it when I get back. And if I find out you didn't use it for rent... Nice one, sis. Oh, and uh, best of luck with whatever case he was going on about before.
sorry about that. Oh, it's quite all right. Beatty needs a hand with the loo. She's not very mobile these days. Ah, the ravages of age. Well, it's nice to see you. I was beginning to wonder whether we'd ever actually meet again. <laughs> oh, how so? Well, as far as Ron and I are concerned, I think things have stalled, to say the least. Oh, dear. How so? Well, one minute we were getting on famously, and the next... Well, he's being... I don't know. He's, he's, he's cold towards me. I mean, whenever I suggest meeting, he puts me off. Oh, dear. In fact, the last time I spoke to him, I've got to be honest, he was downright rude. I don't know why he suddenly turned on me. It's, it, it, it's as if I've done something wrong and he won't tell me what it is. Is he prone to that sort of thing? Well, um, actually, Molly, I think that Ron's attitude towards you is, is based on a misunderstanding. What, what kind of misunderstanding? <laughs> he thought that you were after his money. <sighs> Did he? Why on earth would he think that? The weekend in the expensive hotel. But that was his idea. Yes. That's because he wanted to impress you. Why? Because he thought you had lots of money. He thought I was wealthy? Yes. And when he found that you lived here, he... Uh... I have to tell you, Molly, I think Ron's behaviour has been contemptible. So he really thought that I was after him for his money? I can assure you that you have absolutely nothing to blame yourself for. Well, that's very kind of you, David. It's helped restore a bit of my faith in human nature. Oh, there's BT again. Right. Well, I'd better get going. Oh, thank you for the tea. David, look, um, I bought a couple of tickets for Ron and I for a do next week, and, well, under the circumstances, um... I just wondered whether you would like to go instead. Yes, yes, I'd love to. Oh, well, that's splendid. All right, well, look, I'll phone you later with the details. I'd better go and get us sorted out now. Oh, yes, yes, of course. Hey, nice, hey, boss. Welcome back, kid. All right, Jimmy, uh, what's with all the signs? I thought we'd extend the range of things that we sell. Dim sum, bargees, some elders' food from the five continents. We're going ethnic. Oh, yeah, but are they selling? Yeah, doing really well. And I only had a little sign up. But with these bigger ones, more people will know what we're flogging. Sounds good to me. Nice idea, isn't it? Well, to be honest with you, it was Mo's idea. But being a manager, you know, credit where credit's due. You not be able to get out! Kids. Sounds a bit tense, isn't it? Mental. Listen, Mo will be made up you like an ethnic idea. They'll tell her when she comes in. Uh, actually, I wanted a word about that. Listen, I was going to do the ordering. You get off home, relax. Got a business to run, Jimmy. Yeah, but Mick, that's my job. But that was only in case I got sent down, Jimmy. Yeah, uh, no, but... Yeah, but you gave him a contract. Look, Jimmy, I made up he's going to take over for me. But I'm back now. I'm running things. So what happens to me, Dad? We just go back to the way it was. Which means we're not going to need Mo anymore. And seeing as how you took on without telling me, then you're the one to give the push. I know so that's. Hi. Hello. I thought you were going to be late. Oh, well, the Law Society meeting cancelled. So I thought we could sit down and have a look at these. OK, I'm sorry about all that this morning. Well, you were wrong, anyway. What about? About Louise finding her father. What do you mean? Louise phoned. She's at Tom and Jones, and she's very excited. She's found him. She can't have. I've just spoken to her. Oh, my God. She can't have. I mean, that's impossible. Eleanor, can you please tell me what this is all about? Hiya, love. Hi, Dad. Are you off? Um, I've just got to see Max about something. You know, was in there? It's only advice on wine. Oh, right. Uh, did our Michael tell you that I had to take a few bob out the till? How much? Well, only 30 quid for now, but I'm going to need some more soon. Pay off me plastic. Christmas and one or two other things have crippled me. What other things? Golf and holidays with women? Don't remind me. Anyway, I haven't got to justify myself to me business partner, have I? See you later. See ya. Oh. 
Can I help you? Um, I want a Maxo Susanna, please. Oh, they're not in, I'm afraid. Oh, no. Um, is it important? I might be able to help. Um, no, it's all right, Julia. I'll call back later. Oh, well, there's no point, love, because they've gone to the Lake Districts and they won't be back till next week. If you'll excuse me, I've got a little work to do. So let me get this straight. This Nick chap, who Louise thinks is her father, doesn't in fact exist. That's correct. And he never existed? No. I made him up to put her off. But she's trawled around Reading and found someone she thinks is her father. Well, it can't be, can it? I don't know who she's found, but it certainly isn't her father. But why don't you just tell her the truth about who her father is? Why the lies? Because I don't want her to find him. But you know where he is? Roughly. Could you give me a straight answer, please? All right. Louise's father's name is Marcus, OK? He's in prison. Prison? So now do you understand why I didn't want Louise to have anything to do with him? Next tonight, are the safety features in modern cars giving a false sense of security? Dramatic footage suggests that for some, the answer is most definitely yes. Crash continues in a few minutes. You're on four. in the middle of the day. I've got a stock take at the weekend, so I'm having the afternoon off. You? Oh, I just left some papers behind. What's all that racket outside? Oh, a friendly neighbourhood tinhead and some chums messing around on a motorbike. Oh, where are they? Oh, lost. Here. Let me... No, I'm all right. I said I'm all right. I'm sorry. Look, it might help if you were to let me know everything, you know. I don't know whether I can. Why? Don't you trust me? Oh, yes, it's not that. It's... Oh, Ollie, I feel so rotten about lying to you and Louise. What are you doing for the rest of the afternoon? Oh, paperwork. Well, can Katie hold the fort? Yes. Right. What are you doing? Bringing Katie. You need a little adjournment to your daily routine. Oh, she's on her lunch break. Well, I'll leave a message. Ollie. Eleanor, you're taking the rest of the day off. We're going out. Objection overruled. These things always seem so much more serious when they're written down, don't they? It's all official, then? Yep. Paddy Grant owns the bar. It's all weird and black and white. <sighs> a bit of a fight in the bar a few months ago, and I ended up losing my business and carrying a baby. Well, at least you're still involved, eh? Does the contract mention your dad? What do you think? Jackie, you're gonna have to tell him as soon as you can. Hiya. I will. Hiya. Come on, come and see Jackie and Katie. Oh, oh hello, <laughs> babe. Isn't she gorgeous? Oh, look at her. How are you? You're right. Yeah, fine, thanks. Have you had a good time? Brilliant, yeah. Oh, yeah, it looks great. And um, where did you get this? Some designer shop. I thought I'd start the year as I mean to go on. What, you mean bankrupt? <laughs> oh, look at this little princess. What are you gonna say to Jackie and Katie? Hello. Hiya. <laughs> oh, look at her. <laughs> right, best take us to Loosh, been dying to go. Come on, then, Ruth. Yeah, do you want me to take her? Well, yeah, if you want. Come on, then. Shall we bring Winnie? Oh, come on. Oh, thank you. <laughs> See to that, eh? Who'd have thought a two-year-old would take to Jackie? The 
should have another channel on this telly. Wise, you got another excuse to slob round. Well, I'll help me date, but pass quicker while I'm waiting for Shaz to come home. I'll help you date, pass quicker. If you got off that couch and got yourself a job. There aren't any. Well, you could try a scheme. On what they pay? Hey, Jimmy Corkin's a case, isn't he? His washing machine's bust, and he's expecting me to fix it for nothing. Well, he's your mate, isn't he? Yeah, but I've got a business to run. Well, if he was my mate, I'd help him out. He's in college, isn't he? Yeah, but if I did that for everybody, I wouldn't have a business to run, would I, clever dick? What's that, love? It's a letter from Mel's school. What about? Nothing. What do you mean, nothing? And I am interested in what Mel does in school as well, you know. <sighs> well, all Mel's class is going on holiday this year to Spain. Where is she going? Well, it's a bit pricey, £280. Pounds. Well, we should be able to manage that. Do you reckon? Yeah, put a bit of wage week. I mean, I never went on any of them school trips when I was a kid. She's welcome to it. So can I have some money for me and Shaz to go to Butlins then, or what? No. Why not? Because you can pay for yourself. With what? We well, you can get yourself a job, even part-time. You'd be able to afford it. Oh, so I see. Our Melanie, like, gets 400 quid to go to Spain, and you won't even give me a few bob to go to Patheli. Hey, she's still at school. You can pay for yourself. Oh, change the record, will you? Wouldn't you think he'd sort himself out, eh? I think it's this house. How do you mean? Well, I used to clean the windows here. I used to hear Ron Dixon having to go with their Michael about getting up off his backside as well. Yeah, but at least he's done something, hasn't he? Oh, we haven't had to talk to all about him. Yeah, I'm just going to put me body armour on. There you go. Here's your juice. Just finish that and I'll take you over to see Daddy. She's enjoying it, aren't you? She's a little mace, aren't you, babe? <laughs> I always thought you weren't bothered with kids. I'm not. It's just... Well, she's dead nice, isn't she? She's great, aren't you, darling? So, um, what did your mum say about you and Christian? Mm, said she wishes she'd have had the courage to throw my dad out. Yeah. Must have been really scary when he used to hit your mum. Yeah, well, he used to hit when me and Beth were out of the way. Well, at first, and then it just got worse and worse as time went by. You wonder what makes fellas hit women, don't you? Mm. But being Christian's taught not to take any more asshole off any anyone. Girl power, eh, Rach? From now on, yeah. <laughs> Right, I better go. I'll see you later. Kiss, kiss. Mm. So, what has happened while I've been away, you? What do you mean? Well, I don't know. You just seem sort of different, all sort of mumsy. Me? Mm, like playing my roof and all that. Yeah, well, it's still me, OK? OK. Mm. Marcus Seddon, BSc, MSc. He'd have been a professor if he hadn't got prison. But you loved him. Yes, I did. So why is he in prison? What do you do? Can we take this one step at a time? Why not? OK. Well, I first spotted him in a pub we used to go to in the Upper Six. There was this group of student -y types laughing and talking. <laughs> we thought they were so sophisticated. There he was, holding court in the middle of them, like some great guru. A potential cult leader. I'm serious. I was totally bowled over by him. I was your average goody two-shoes student. Essays in before the deadline and to bed early the night before exams. And then, there he was. Fatal attraction. As Gaz. He was into animal rights. Oh, yes. Who with? The ALF. <laughs> no, they weren't militant enough for him. Activists against vivisection. I don't think I remember them. <laughs> Just as well. So, you started going out with him? Yeah. Before I knew it, I was going around with him and the other activists on demos. My dad was furious. He was worried I was going to ruin my chance of a place at university. But everything Marcus said seemed to make sense. I mean, somebody had to stop the animal experiments, and, well, we thought that should be us. So just how violent did these protests get? Well, you know, it was all a bit scrappy, really. A couple of bricks and bottles thrown, but nobody was hurt. More luck than judgment, I should imagine. It just seemed right that we should throw things. You just take the risk that no-one will get hurt. It's a bit of a drastic change from, 
from schoolgirl to potentially violent and activist. That was Marcus for you. So what are you saying? I told you. I was totally bowled over by him. I had no idea what I was getting into. So you were more interested in him than in the cause? Oh, no, I never had any doubts about animal rights. It was just our methods of protest that I was concerned about. But Marcus could talk me into anything. Can I come in? Aren't you supposed to knock before you come in? I did it do, but you must have been able to hear me. What? Turn the music down, Tim. What do you want? Can you take those things off? I can't hear you. I'm deaf, remember? Look. Look, you're going to have to start thinking about what you're going to do for work. There isn't any. Not for me. Well, there must be something. Only stuff that pays peanuts. Well, that's always been the way you start off. But it doesn't make it right, though, does it? No, but everybody's got to start somewhere, haven't they? Dibble gets two twenty an hour for stacking shelves. How come he can afford to run his motorbike then? He's got two jobs, collecting glasses in clubs. Well, maybe you should think about doing something else as well. Oh, so do you think it's a good idea having two jobs? I'll be knackered. Oh, come on. You're young and you're fit. You've got to start thinking about paying the bills. Oh, do you mean our Mel's trip to Spain? We've been over that. No, I mean the household bills. Look, I'm not doing slave labour. If they want to employ me, they can make me proper wages. Well, why don't you think about going to college and getting some qualifications? I was expelled from school. Do you remember? Come off it. Jimmy Corkill was wasting you when he was growing up. He was into all sorts. And look at him now. Well, maybe he finds it easy to do book work. You can't give in just because the going gets tough. Sometimes you've got to force yourself to do things. Look, I'm not going to college. Well, what are you going to do then? Because you can't lay around the house for the rest of your life. Well, maybe that's what I will do. Well, you see, on the one hand, I feel so angry with treating me like that. But on the other hand... Well, have you told her how you feel? Yeah. And no. Too tired for that baddie rant. And I thought I'd go and front him, but he had a gun, Jack. I mean, what, what kind of bloke is he? You don't know the half of it, Peter. I mean, what well, anything to do with someone like Baddie Rant anyway? No one with half a brain inside the head. The thing is... The bottom line is... I miss it. Look. You get out there and find someone who's not going to do it. Best forget about women altogether, then, Ellie. Yeah. See ya. See ya, mate. Hiya. 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 Oh, again. Oh, just looking forward to a bit of peace and quiet. Hiya, love. Hiya. Yeah, all right. Uh, how's your mum all right? Great, thanks. Sent her regards. Oh, lovely. Go on, sit down. Come on, put your plate. Ruth, sit down. The seat's over there. What's wrong? Sick or something? Sick and tired of being disturbed. Yeah, you sound disturbed. Come on, shove up, will you? It's easy to see who the favourites are around here. Doesn't look like I'm one of them, does it? Oh, Tim, do you like that? Oh, forget it. I want to do something about him. He's a real spoiled brat. I thought we were meant to be breaking into a laboratory. To do what? To rescue some beagles as they were doing tobacco testing on. God, it was a terrible place. It was all supposed to be straightforward. What happened? Well, it didn't go according to plan. The place was meant to be empty. A small group of us were to break in and release the dogs. But... But? There was a scientist working late. Oh, dear. He saw us and he started shouting at the security guard. Oh, I was terrified. But Marcus... Go on. Marcus just started laying into him to stop him shouting. He just seemed to go berserk. My God. It was terrible. I couldn't believe it. I mean, he was just an ordinary guy, and it all happened so quickly. Was he killed? No. He was very seriously injured. 
He ended up in a vegetative state. It turned out he was absolutely brilliant, a future Nobel Prize winner. And he had two small children. Were you caught? No. The security guard came as we were running away, and well, he and Marcus got into a tussle, but Marcus escaped. And he was arrested within a couple of days. The security guard picked him out of an ID parade. Well, how come they didn't get you? Well, I thought they would. I mean, I was expecting a knock on the door any moment for days, but Marcus wouldn't tell them anything. Very noble. We'd all have gone to prison with him. It was a terrible time. The police came and searched everywhere and asked all sorts of questions. And then they found some explosives. It had been stolen from the local quarry. I couldn't believe it. I mean, Marcus had always talked about taking things into his own hands if the government wouldn't act, but I just had no idea he was prepared to go so far. So what happened? Well, in the end, they only had enough evidence against Marcus. And? They jailed him just before Louise was born. So did he know you were pregnant? Yeah. I told him during the trial. After prison, we kept in touch for a while, and well, then I realized I had to stop pretending that I was going to wait for him. So I stopped writing. So he doesn't know anything about Louise? No. And have you heard from him since? Well? He's still inside. But after what? 18 years? He beat up a scientist and left him for dead. <laughs> and then he set fire to the place. With an injured scientist and a, and a security guard inside? Yes. I mean, they survived. The fire brigade arrived in time, but they found the explosives and... He got 30 years. Right, sir. All right, mate. Yeah, I'll take it. Good, yeah. Where's Ruthie? Carmel's got it. We just got back from the park. She's absolutely shattered. Do you want a cuppa? No, sir. I'm awful of in the ammo and everything. So you're doing a bit, eh? Yeah, seeing as I'm not going to be detained at Her Majesty's pleasure, mm. I thought I'd give the place a going over. Yeah. Yeah. How are we going to choose wallpaper without a woman in your life? Very quickly. <laughs> <laughs> but the kids are made up. It's all over, Andy. Ah, they said, I picked Emma from school today. Tita said she's back to her old self. So, it's all changed here. Yeah. I'm going right through the place. I've already struck the room, you know. Well, Gladys's room. Yeah. And uh, when I finished here, yeah, it's our bedroom. I should have said, my bedroom. Yeah, uh, getting the lovely space of your name, eh? Yeah, I gotta move on, Sim. Take no notice of the kids. Get everything sorted out at work. Yeah, with Jimmy in charge. <laughs> no, I've relieved him of that. And I've got rid of Mo, so I'm back in charge of everything. When did you get rid of Mo? What Jimmy's supposed to do today? Well, I've just seen her working for Jimmy. I've just been there now. <sighs> you want a job doing, eh? Uh, ah, well, I better get back over to the baby. All right. See you later. All right, mate. Hey, listen, sir, I'm throwing some of Elaine's old gear up there. Do you think Carmel might want some? No, Carmel won't want any. There might be something that'll fit me, though. <laughs> <laughs> See you later. See you later, sir. Hiya. Oh. Hiya. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. I'm whacked. Is the bar busy? Yeah. There's a couple of football teams in. I just want my feet up for five minutes. So, um, what are you doing? Oh, coursework, but not time to be in for next week. Oh, busy little beaver, eh? Oh, there's a few girls off the course then. Can I go and skiing just before Easter? Do you fancy it? Oh, yeah, I haven't done skiing since school. Oh, what? Well, the baby. Yeah, well, well, it'll be a couple of months. Jack, you can't go shooting down a ski slope. I was here somewhere. Oh, come on, Casey. I've seen them in all them women's magazines, swimming and all sorts. Do you really think Max and Susanna are going to give the blessing to you going skiing? They don't own me. Look, I'm sorry I mentioned it. Look, Casey, we just put my name down and I'll decide. Not Max and Susanna. Hey, 
yes, he is. It's a bobies. Yes, he is. Come here. Where's Winnie? Where's Winnie? Here you go, good little princess. In you go. There you are. Why don't you let her settle? She won't go to sleep, you know. She'll sleep like a log, aren't you, babe? Um, can I borrow a tenner? What for? I'm meeting Shaz at the pictures. Well, I thought you were going to tidy your room. Oh, tomorrow? You can have a fiver. A fiver? Hey, Tim, I'm trying to settle the baby. Oh, so now I can't speak because there's a little sprog in the house. Just go to the pictures, will you? Here, here's a fiver. Thanks. So you go up all boys now, and I'll see you after that. Sweet Tim, give me a kiss. All right. And aren't you a big girl? Sleeping with Mel and Shannon? Good night, darling. Come on, Rita. Oh, she's a big girl. Right. Let's go see what's on telly. Well, couldn't you think of something more exciting to do? Like what? Well, your little problem's sorted out, isn't it? Mm-hmm. And there's no one due home for the next couple of hours. Well, I was going to wash me hair. Get in the bedroom. Oh, oh now, oh now, careful. Oh. If Louise hadn't been so keen on finding her father, would you ever have told me about Marcus? Well, it's not the sort of thing one just blurts out over dinner, is it? So where is he? I presume he's still in prison. I've seen him on television on a couple of rooftop protests, so he won't have got parole yet. You're not really sure whether he's in prison at all, are you? Well, it's very unlikely that he's been released. Unlikely? That means there's a chance he might be free. And I'm getting the feeling that maybe I should be just a little bit concerned about our safety. <laughs> That's going a bit over the top, isn't it? Oh, is it? Louise found you. Why can't he? Who's mm. mm. Oh, gorgeous, that, mm. eh? Oh, it's great having our little Ruth here, isn't it? Yeah. She could have her here all the time. Well, as she gets older, she can stay with us more often, can't she? Yeah. Never thought I'd ever feel this way about a kid, you know. Well, when Mandy took her to Bristol, I was gutted, but you never think you're going to see them again, do you? But I think it's really important that we keep up this connection, don't you? Mm. Well, I think it's dead important you'd have the same connection with our Tim. <sighs> I mean, I know it's hard, but I don't think I could cope on my own. We're a good team, aren't we? Yeah. And can we talk about being a great couple tomorrow? Mm. Take me, Simbad. Where to? Mm. <laughs> Use your imagination. <laughs> uh, hello, love. <sighs> Isn't this fun? Over a bill. Oh, right. She's shattered. She's just been dead busy over the last few days. Jack? What? Oh, I must have nodded off. Sorry to disturb you, Jack, but someone's card has expired and he's got to pay his bill. Yeah, okay, I'll be down in a minute. It's not like you to sleep this early. You run off your feet, eh? No. No, I just feel a bit iffy, that's all. Well, it was Katie who said you run off your feet. Well, no, I uh, feel a bit if he was being caused by being on off her feet, wasn't it? So. Well, make up your minds. It's not like you at all. How do you mean? Well, the bar's jumping and you're in here with your feet up. I don't know. Getting tired and all mumsy over kids. Must be getting old, Jack. <sighs> I messed that up, didn't I? I'm not kidding. I warned you about all this, didn't I? OK, so we get our story straight that we're both saying the same thing. It's all right for now. What about when you start to show? When do you say you've had too much steak and kidney pie? Well, I'll cross that bridge when I come to it. Jackie, it's not just about looking pregnant, it's about feeling it as well. What do you mean? Well, little Ruth was only here for a couple of hours and she didn't want to let go of you. So? But when you give this one to Max and Susanna, what happens if that one takes a shine to you as well? I thought you were going to help me through all this, not keep putting obstacles in me way. I just keep thinking of Eleanor's daughter, Louise. I mean, being brought up all those years, not knowing who a real mother was. That's exactly what's going to happen here. No, because this is going to be the best kept secret ever. And that's because everyone involved can't afford for anyone else to know. Max and Susanna don't want anyone to know, and neither do I. So we keep it between us, and you're going to help me. 
I've told you I will. But realistically, Jackie, if you think you can keep a baby a secret, you better think again. A Chinese banquet in Harrow on the Hill and a culinary celebration of Nelson's victory, Trafalgar. Scurvy knave Hugh Fernley Whittingstall presents more TV dinners next. And later tonight, Under the Moon will be welcoming cricketing legend Jeff Boycott to the sofa. If you have something to say, give them a call on 0990 044444. Under the Moon, from midnight.